Hi everybody, it's Jen from Scan and Cut Jam Sessions and Scan and Cut Canvas and Scal Help on Facebook. I finally am getting into projects. Thank goodness. These are the acrylic blanks. Um, I want to start getting into doing some of these things with you all. These blanks come with a paper on it that you peel off. It keeps them from getting scratched. Um, after they make them and they send them to you so then you just you know peel this stuff off pretty simple but I'm gonna oracle these okay and I'm gonna etch these so I'm gonna finish peeling this off and I'll come back okay so I have them all cleaned off I did have to order separately um, these oh sorry these key ring type of things and I wanted this type I don't don't didn't like the other kind that they had to offer so this is the type I got and then <clears throat> you'll need ooh, some D ring or not D ring sorry some of these little dub I can't hang on to anything today some of these little double o-rings okay to attach them and that's about all you'll need plus your little pieces of vinyl I'm just going to use scrap okay because I've measured these I don't need any fancy little measuring tools I use my mat right here okay and I lay the edge of the football along one of these lines and then I measure this side well it's an inch and three quarters uh, wide in height. I'm going to lay the top of the laces and then down here so it's about an inch and a quarter almost an inch and a half long. So I know I'm going to go about an inch and a half wide and an inch tall. Well that's going to be difficult on our machine right because it doesn't cut intricate things right? Wrong it cuts them just fine right here and especially the font that I use I don't know if you guys can see this yeah you can see this this is the collegiate and it has actually an outline let me see if I can pull one of these for you it's a pain in the hind end when you're weeding it because you have to be very careful because it is such an intricate piece to weed but our machine does fine it cuts it perfectly just slow the speed down I think I cut this one at uh, speed of three blade depth of uh, two and a pressure of a minus oh I think it was a minus three on this one I'm going to have to slow this down because i got to get my head down in there and weed because I'm half blind. But I'll weed this out, come back and show you. Okay, so here it is all weeded. So that's how small, I mean, this is. And you can see the fine lines. Let me focus this a little bit better for you how fine those lines are, how tiny they are. I mean, look how thin that line is. And I cut it with the scan and cut, no problems, no snags, no rips, no tears, no nothing. Just sawed right along, sawed right through it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get all the other ones done and then show you how to go about assembling things like this. Okay? Now for those of you that maybe want to bring this in, that was my cat. Dead gum cat tried climbing the <clears throat> embroidery spools I have hanging on the wall and knocked every single one of them down. But if you want to try, um, or if you want to bring um, the exact size of this in to save it as like an SVG, so that you can use it to make 
um, you know, different things with it. Put it on a white piece of paper. Clean it off. It's got dust on it. And then with a nice dark, kind of like a fine tip marker, come in and start tracing. Oops. Tracing around it and kind of hold the marker at an angle so that it gets as close to the true size as possible. And go all the way around. And when you take this like into scale, you can clean it up if there's like some little things hanging out. Or little specks that get in there. I have videos on that too, how to clean up your files fonts, all that good stuff. <laughs> okay, and I'll even do a little circle. Alright, there we go. So you can scan that in with your scan and cut and save it as a JPEG so that you can um, use it whatever way you want. You can take it into scale or whatever, okay? I'm actually just going to take a picture of mine. It's quicker that way for me. Okay, so here I have it in scale. And you see it comes in really well. Just take the picture and trace it in. Um, you don't even have to load it onto your computer. You just plug your little USB card in, click trace, find your card, and then pull it in that way. Okay. So here it is. Now what I, let me back it out a little bit. What I want to do, and I don't like recording this way, but we'll have to make do. I want to come up here to path, and I want to click simplify. Okay, see how all, all of these nodes, there's 962 nodes right now. If I click simplify, that's going to take it to 167. But let's see if it distorts the image. Nope. So let's click OK. And let's click on it to double check. Alright, so that took it from almost a thousand little points down to 167. And when you decrease the amount of nodes, that decreases the amount of work that your blade has to do. Because each time your blade touches a node, it kind of, it's almost like a, um, what's that called? almost like a um, pinball. It's like boom, 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 boom. It has to do all of that work. So when you decrease the amount of bumpers in pinball, that's a good thing for your blade. Okay. So now I measured my little uh, mason jar. So now I need to come over. Gosh darn it. This is why I don't like recording on this. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to set I'm going to uncheck Keep Proportions, and I'm going to set the width at, what was it, 1.75. You know what? Hang on. I need to... <laughs> it's, it's exactly what I thought was going to happen because I didn't change it. I need to turn that upright and get it to where it's actually even. Let me make sure, line it up there and make sure it's going to be even. Yep, that looks good. Okay, so now let's come over here and do it. Wide, we want 1.75 wide. And we want 3 high. 3, 0, 0. No, not 3, 3, 3. 3, 0, 0. Okay. Because that is how wide my little keychain is. Okay? To the T. Alright. So let's come up here to effects. We're going to do a shadow layer. And we're going to do a blackout shadow. And let's see if it will give me what I need. I don't know if it did. No, okay. 
it's not actually what I want to do is I want a total backfill so I'll have to figure that out in a little bit because I really want to get to actually making these but that's how you go about making an SVG for that because then you can go up to file export and then turn it into an SVG which is what I'll do right now and I'll put it in my SVG files right over here and we'll put mason jar <clears throat> so that's a little secret on how you make one so any little uh, thing that you get that you want to turn into an SVG a lot of people freak out because they think oh no it didn't come with one it's really easy to make one all right so don't stress out about it okay back to business okay so here we are at the machine put my stick in here and let's start and I have all my scrap um, 651 in there all right so let's see here okay so here's all the ones that I saved you can't even see what that says it's so small let me see what I have my blade set on over here I think this is the old blade but I want it kind of shallow I think, yep, I think this is the old one. Let me find the new one. Okay, and on my new blade, I have it set to about... Let me see if I can bring this in here for you. I have it set to about a point... Oh, goodness about a point two five or point half okay that's the new blade and trust me it cuts deep enough I sawed through a sheet of HTV yesterday thank goodness it was a large design that I didn't have to worry about I could just actually hand place it it was on a one and it went right through it okay so let me make sure that this is all placed okay up here yep I'm gonna hit okay I have three keychains to make I have enough for two so I'm gonna come in here and you know what let's do it this way I'm gonna come in here and union the name okay so this is what I'm doing now Click OK. Union. Union one. And I'm doing this one at a time because I have to add more of those. Okay? So you can't union them all because when you do, when you go to add more, you're going to add doubles or, you know. So instead of just adding one more of each, I'd have to add four more of each, and I don't want to do that. Okay, so let's come in here. And do you see this? This is where you add them. So I'm going to add another one of those. And it's not doing it yet. Okay, i got to go hit OK. There we go. And I'm going to bring that up here. gonna come in here highlight that I'm gonna add another one of those 
click OK, come back out here, and bring it over here. Now I'm going to move all of these and arrange them so that they're up. Oops, I forgot to do that one. Oops, guess I better go do it. Let me do this. This will let me see it better. Okay. We'll highlight that. This at least lets you get to see the different things in here and how they're used. Okay, that looks pretty darn good. Okay. So let's highlight so we don't want that, 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 or that. Click OK. Unify. There we go. So let's bring it up there. That one up here. Because we want to save as much space as possible. We don't like to waste things. But this is my scrap. But I'm going to try to get as much out of it as possible. Okay. Alright, that looks good. So I click OK, but now I want to add... my other things, the ones that I want to um, this one I'm going to um, etch and I'm going to need two of those and I can actually put it on top here because I have enough paper up to four, one, two, yep, so that's okay. And then I have another one that I'm going to etch on the mason jars. <clears throat> and right here. Look at how tiny that is. So this ought to be interesting to see how this one cuts. Okay, so before I go doing anything, I am going to have to go, oops, come on, I'm going to have to go in there and, ah, I'm going to have to go in there and pull out, all right, there we go. Where's this one go? Bring it right down here. All right. I'm going to have to come in here and adjust my settings, is what I was trying to say. <clears throat> so let's come to our little wrench. Let's take that pressure down. Okay. Let's take our cut speed down. Because I'm not in a hurry. I don't have a hot date. <clears throat> I'm going to adjust my blade depth. I just took it from a half and I'm going to put it up to about well for this one I'm going to put it up to about one and a quarter because I can see a fairly good piece of that blade sticking out and that terrifies me. Okay actually I might take that cut pressure down even more. I'm going to take it down to a minus five. <clears throat> I'm going to start cutting and then I'll see what it looks like as it goes. And I shall return. Okay, 17 hours and three pots coffee later, I've got it all weeded finally. Okay. Well, oops, I forgot one. Oh, phew. This is how things usually go for me. All right, so here's all the football ones. Oops. That's all the football ones right here. And this is the ones for the um, etching. Those two are going to be etched. So these are all the football ones. 
but I have to weed this one yet. This is really simple. This one's going to be for me and guess what it is? The dragonfly. Oops, and I did it wrong. See, I've been doing this too much. And that's okay because I'll put it on my computer. But I need to keep the reverse. So this is what I need, silly girl. And I'll just stick this right here on my computer. But that low-tech transfer tape, Sorry, I'm trying to put this on my computer. Um, that I would tell all you guys about, tell you to go to stalls and get it. Although some people think it's a secret that I try to keep. I don't. Go to stalls and get low-tech transfer tape. That's what this stuff is. It's good for heat. You can do HTV with it. You can do rhinestones with it. You can do this stuff with it, and not, not a lot, actually, none of the um, transfer tapes that I've read will allow you to do that. A lot of them will tell you do not use with heat. Actually, all of them will tell you do not use with heat. And if you find any that is heat transferable or heat tolerable, they will tell you do not use it with or Cal 651 and all that. Why? Well, I don't know, but that's what they tell you. Okay, now I need to put this on a colored background because I have a hard time seeing um, with light. Due to my lupus, my eyes are very sensitive to light. That's why when it's a sunny day, I, I, I can't go outside. I, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. You know what? I'll just do it this way. This is easier. So I'm going to lay it upside down and do it this way. Okay. And I didn't notice if you guys noticed on here and this little thing has a really cute little edge at the bottom. You see that? I just really like these. And they're nice and thick and strong. Okay. So I laid that upside down. So that I could get it nice and even on there. Sorry. So I could get it nice and even on there. So instead of trying to put it on like this. I laid it upside down and set it on there. And I'm just going to smooth it on there really good because this is what is getting the etching cream. I'm not a big fan of that um, etching cream. Because it's hit and miss. Some places it will etch really nice and then the other places it just doesn't etch real well. And even if you smooth it around and you squish it down and you do all that stuff to it, it just does not want to work real well and I've left it on the amount of time it says I've left it on an hour because I did it on accident completely forgot what I was doing and it still does not work right and it doesn't matter if it's the expensive Pyrex stuff or it's the cheap dollar stuff it's just really hit and miss so to me hey man if I can use a sander on it that's what I'm going for I do have the air etcher but I want to um, go to uh, Harbor Freight. What am I doing? I'm standing here being a windbag. I want to go to Harbor Freight and uh, actually get the stuff to make the blasting cabinet. And I'm going to make one, a uh, homemade one out of uh, Tupperware container. Okay, so I just peeled the uh, low-tech transfer tape off of there. I'm going to stick it on here so I can transfer this one because this stuff is reusable. 
if you have a hard time um, getting the low tech transfer tape let me know and I'll see if I can hook you up because there you have to buy it in big rolls and I know a lot of you don't want to because you don't do this stuff like as, as much as I do so I will help you out if I can I gave all my stuff away the last time alright so let me make sure you can see this. Oh, I'm sorry, my hand's in the way, isn't it? Let me try to turn here. So I'm going to set this like this. My fingers are sticking to it. I'm going to set it on there. Okay, and now I'm going to have to cover the top. That's what this extra piece was because, of course, when I'm doing things, I never think of that. I'm always trying to save space, save stuff. I inherited the cheapskate bone from my dad. I mean, it pays off, let me tell you. You know what? Nope, instead of using that, I can just use what I cut off from here. So I don't have to waste anymore. There we go. Make sure you smooth that down really good because you don't want any getting under any cracks or any of that. You don't want it to etch a bad part, you know, or etch a part that you don't want. Roll that over, seal down all of your edges. Oh, and there's a crack in it, so I'm going to take a piece off of the edge right here. Where's my little tweezers? And I'm going to seal this. Okay. So, I'm going to go through and finish getting this all sealed down. But I'll show you how to do a transfer of the other ones real quick. Okay, so. Same transfer tape. Stick that down where my footballs go. Right here. Peel this off. Make sure all the letters come along with it. Center it on there. Oops. Don't lose your grip. There you go. Give it some good rubs. Pick it up and peel it off. And there you go. So it's it's stuck down nice. Other side, let's grab a number. Grab it with your low tech transfer tape. Pick it up. Peel it off. Bring it over here. Center it up. Push it down, rub it really hard and really good, pick it up, remove this slowly, and there you go. You have your number, you have your name, you'll take your uh, double ring, your double, uh, yeah, what that's called, that double key ring, that single ring, put it in there, and then you'll put this on there. And it'll be a keychain, just like that. Alright, I'll be back with the etching cream. Okay, so I don't know why I told you <laughs> etching. I uh, forgot, I guess, that we can't etch plastics. And acrylics are plastics. And the etching stuff, the etching cream, won't work on plastics. So instead, we'll try some alcohol inks. Because I don't want to just keep doing regular old vinyl. 
And by the way, here's what the here's what the keychains end up looking like when they're all attached. Okay. So let's try some alcohol inks. Y'all know I'm partial to a hot pink. So let me put down a paper towel. Because when I get creatively inspired, sometimes I get a little messy. <clears throat> My fall allergies are catching up to me, evidently. <clears throat> Hopefully you guys can see this. Yeah, okay. I'm going to take it and just put a little bit on the end of my Q-tip. Dead gum shaky hands. Okay. And I'm just taking it and I'm dotting it around here. And with this you can get a lot of 3D effects. You can do lots of different things with alcohol inks. <clears throat> I'm just going to keep on dialing. Okay, so there's that one. And the person with the nun as boys is my mother. And she likes purple. Okay, so I'll keep working this, letting it dry, going back over it. Just keep working it, working it, working it. Until I build up enough color that it's going to be okay when I remove the vinyl. And this vinyl is Oracal 651. It was just scraps that I had. Okay, so I'll come back after I have a bit more of it down. Okay, I got them colored where I want, but because these are mason jars, I want to color them blue. Now, I don't want it really dark, so of course I have my blending solution and I'm going to thin it. So I'm going to add a couple drops, maybe two. And I'm going to start kind of moving it around. Just want a light little coating. Just up to the rim. And this stuff seems to go forever.
Okay, so I got a little bit of a coating there. Now, take it and just kind of let it grow. <clears throat> And it's still growing. Kind of put a little pressure down here and maybe help it a little bit. And a little bit more. And kind of start to swirl it around. I'm going to pause this. My kids just got home. Okay, so I have some ink on this one. And I'm just going to slowly start to rock it around. the grooves catch it so it doesn't go all over the place there we go I plucked the fuzzies off here because when the fuzzies get stuck in your ink, oh, is it a mess. Okay, now let's try to get the rest of this top. Okay, so I have all the ink on. This one is still drying. This one looks like it's pretty dry. So let's peel it off and see what it looks like. Yeah. Mm. Oops, my camera's gonna fall over. There. That's what my keychain's gonna look like, and I'm gonna add um, a color to the top of it. But isn't that pretty? Let's see if I can bring it in. So you can see what, how it looks. That is so pretty. 
I love it. Okay. So I'll wait for the other one to dry. Let <clears throat> me lay that that way. But that's how you go about doing acrylic blanks. You can. You can do whatever you want. But that's the way I do them. All right. If you guys have any questions, you can find me at Scan and Cut Canvas and Scowl Help on Facebook. Thanks, guys.